7.42 now, and the murder trial for Alec Murdoch is ongoing in the low country as the state continues to call witnesses to the stand, painting Alec as the killer of his wife and son, Maggie and Paul. Tuesday, the jury getting to hear from Maggie's family for the very first time mm -hmm. as her sister recounted the days after the murders and losing her only sibling. Our very own Haley Spittler is joining us now with everything that you need to know from day 17 of the Murdoch trial. While well, several witnesses took the stand Tuesday, the most emotional testimony yet came from Maggie's sister, Marion Proctor. Proctor offering new insight into Maggie's marriage, family dynamic, and final days. And joining me again this morning to offer her expert input is attorney Lori Murray, our trial analyst. Let's dive into Proctor's testimony. Lori, she talks about how she went to see Alec the day after the murder, asking him if he had any idea who killed Maggie and Paul. His answer was, quote, whoever did it had thought about it for a very long time. Thoughts on that? Well, first of all, let me just say that her her testimony was very emotional and it was almost, it looked so much alike, it was almost like looking at Maggie on the stand. So I thought that was pretty powerful, just mm -hmm. her appearance itself. And we've been wondering where she was. Uh, but Alex saying that whoever had been playing this had been playing it for a long time really is just out of context. It's another weird thing that he says that really makes you question his involvement. It was uh, poor taste, again, um, instead of consoling Maggie's sister, he's talking about whoever did this has been planning it. And again, you almost can hear him going back to the boat case again. Yeah, another interesting comment that she discussed was when she talked about how her main priority after the murders was to find the killer, but it was Alex's main priority to clear Paul's name. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, again, I don't know how he's going to clear Paul's name. If Paul is the, the only way he could clear Paul's name is to prove that Paul wasn't driving that boat, which means that he is still blaming Connor Cook for being the driver of that boat. And it's a weird comment. Her main priority, again, is finding the killer, which should absolutely absolutely be what his main priority is and he is not focused he is focusing on how long it took him to plan it and clearing paul's name it, it just a dichotomy of personality right there now her testimony kind of hit a bump when the lead prosecutor creighton waters asked proctor about what happened in september why did this lead to an objection and how did the judge rule well this is again part of that bad character evidence that um they made a motion to have admitted as part of motive and the judge broke up each different piece of the bad prior acts that he wanted to admit. Like he, the financial crimes were one thing, um, the boating accident was another, and then this roadside shooting was another one. The judge had not admitted that yet. And so when she said it all changed in September, that was when the roadside shooting was. So it blew up because nobody had had an a permission to have this evidence come in so everybody to be sent out and the judge has to decide whether to allow that in the problem is that the defense counsel again opened the door to that testimony when he said what made you change your mind or you know brought in this character evidence so she wants to testify that jim griffin told her about the roadside shooting that's hearsay jim griffin is the one who told her the lawyer for Ellen murdoch so the hearsay is coming from him it was just a whole big mess and judge newman still hasn't ruled on whether all of that comes in he let her talk about it for limited purposes it just didn't let her go into it as prior bad act evidence that's something we'll have to keep following now marion also let it known that maggie called paul her little detective talk to me about that nickname well, the little detective was because if Paul knew that there were drugs in the house or thought that there might be prescription pills in the house that Ellick was taking, he was going to find them. So it means that the family did have knowledge that he did have a drug problem. So now we actually can believe that he had a drug problem, although I don't think it was to the extent of the money that is missing. But it does show that they all knew that he had a problem with prescription pills. And Paul, the little detective, was going to find them and dispose of them before Ellick got to him. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us again this morning, Lori. Court is set to resume in less than two hours at 930. Don't forget, you can watch a trial inside the Fox Carolina News app. That can be streamed on Roku, Apple, and Fire TV. We also have a live blog <clears throat> and live chat on our website. We're showing you what that looks like right here, so you can catch up on anything you missed or chime in. Again, this is on foxcarolina.com. And Lori Murray will be joining us every weekday around 740 throughout the entirety of the Murdoch trial. Make sure and tune in each morning to hear her main takeaways.